Hello everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Privet sim. Hola todos. Hello and Ale. Yase Olus. And of course, Kanichiwa. This week we are in Sanwa mode. That's right, Sanwa Electric Instrument Company Limited, based out of Tokyo, Japan, is the focus. We got some great meters coming your way. Let's get started. Sanwa Electric Company has a long, rich history, and it goes all the way back to, are you ready for this? 1941. Yes, it was founded way back in 1941 by Sanwa Denki Keiki Seisa Kusho. I sure hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, he created his own company um, selling multi-testers and diagnostic equipment. And well, the rest, as they say, was history. Back in January of 1974, the current Sanwa logo, as we know it, was created and established and continues to be there. In the Sanwa spotlight today, we're looking at their mini, their pocket mini, the PM7A. Wow, this one's gonna be fun. PM7A is brand new out of the box from Sanwa. Um, they have quite a few small compartmentalized style multimeters. This is their latest and greatest. Pricing on this particular model does vary. I've seen it go from around $67 all the way up to over 100 and everything in between. Japanese products in general have a certain reputation. Yes, indeed, um, the Japanese quality is paramount. They are known worldwide for their attention to detail and precision. Sanwa is keeping up to those excellent trademarks with this current release. A big thank you to Sanwa for sending this meter out for this review. Appreciate it. Everybody always wants to know what do you get in the box? Well, actually it doesn't really ship in a box. It ships a nice hard covered plastic encasement. Um, yeah, no worries here. You do get your Sanwa standard calibration assurance. Basically, they're telling you that this meter has been calibrated before it left the Sanwa factory. Now there is no date stamp on there. Um, so you're definitely taking this with a grain of salt. Furthermore, um, you get a pretty decent manual. PM7A digital multimeter manual. It is in both Japanese and as well as English. It opens up into a sort of paper style. Really nice quality font, good quality paper. Uh, not that cheap, normal stock that we can get. Uh, very nice diagrams, pictures, what have you. Generally speaking, it is a really, really nice instruction manual. Good job. Something definitely worth pointing out, the fact that this meter is not made in Japan. It is actually made in China. So that might come of a bit of a blow to some diehard Japanese style multimeter gurus out there. Um, yeah, so let's hope, even though it's not Japanese made, that the quality is still Japanese. Now this ships with a standard clamshell style case, which I really like for portability and protection. Actually, Sanwa did something a little neat. They thought out of the box on this one. I'll show that in a minute. Um, in the preface though, here's the Sanwa pocket uh, on the top of the enclosure. And on the bottom, we've got our serial number as well as your standard uh, de facto uh, warning disclosures. Uh, yeah. Now, size-wise, once again, pretty small, uh, about 4.6 by 0.72 inches. That's about 118 millimeters by, by golly, how much? By about 18 millimeters thick. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty tiny. Now, if you recall way back when I did a review on a SATA clamsh clamshell kind of a case, SATA is actually a tiny bit smaller, but really just a fraction. Um, in fact, the Sanwa is thinner. So there you go. Now, unlike the SATA, the Sanwa actually has a really nice fit and finish to it. It has a really solid feel. We've just got to click on that to open it up. Once again, compared to the Sanwa, you can tell the lead accessibility is much better thought out on the Sanwa. Um, has a really nice mechanism here for rolling the leads over so they're not all going to get crumpled up, um, aka SATA style. 
So we just have this one mechanism here. But I like what sand was done. We've got that nice rolling over assembly and the leads just fit in there nice and tight. Speaking of leads, look at that. They really have another neat addition. You can see we've got these little inserts here and that's because on the back of the case, you just clip the leads in like so, so they don't go flying around. Nicely done. So I was talking about a little bit of Japanese ingenuity, and this is what I'm talking about. If we take a look here, we see that rotary selector switch has sort of a round, almost looks like a moon below it, this little part here. And that's actually there for a reason. It's not just cosmetic. It doesn't just help with the movement, which it does. But what it's designed for is it makes sure that you cannot shut the case unless it is in the off position. So if we move the dial, say we're in continuity and we're done and we want to close it, guess what? It doesn't work. You actually have it in the off position is the only way the case will close. Hey, I like that. Makes that meter just a little bit safer. Excellent. Put this meter uh, in any other position other than lying flat horizontally like so um, it would have been nice if this could actually have flipped the other way and act as a stand so you could have a better viewing angle um, as it is it's always going to be flat so you're always going to have to look over to see the display let's take a closer look at the selector switch starting with the off position moving up one to dc volts top position ac volts going down continuity resistance diode display itself quite simple lcd display technology we have one button for range and hold display font is nice and crisp and clean no worries here very very easy on the eyes test leads themselves are marked with a 24 awg gauge wire and it is rated at 600 volts uh, we should be safe and sound. Okay, let's get going with our DC accuracy test. Here we go. According to the instruction manual, the DC voltage measurement range starts at around 400 millivolts. But look at this, no worries here. 250 millivolts is what we want to see and spot on. Next up, 2.50 volts is what we need. And once again, no worries for the Sanwa. Let's take a look at low voltage, um, sitting at 2.50 volts. Coming up is 2.529 on the Sanwa. Let's take it down. Now remember this Sanwa does not do current, not even microamps, so you are out of luck in that respect. It is strictly a voltage multimeter. Okay, we're sitting at 1.7 volts, 1.723. Take it down further. Let's do one volt even. 1.020 on the Sanwa. Okay, how low can you go? We'll soon find out. 0 0.50 volts and 0.519. Already now we're sitting at 200 millivolts and showing up as 217 for the sand. Well, let's bring it down to 100 millivolts. And yeah, look at that, 116.7. And that is as low as we can go. So we lose a little bit um, of the accuracy when we're getting to that low millivolt mode. But uh, other than that, it seems to be able to keep up. Not a problem. Resistance is next. I have this precision metal clad resistor, 8.25 ohms, 1%. Before we do that, though, let's see if we have any resistance on those test leads. And no. Oh, hang on. We do. Ever so slight and back to zero so basically null in terms of resistance on the leads i gotta say i've always loved san juan leads i just love them um i i don't know what to say oh, i use san juan leads a lot on other multimeter brands um, i just really really like the quality okay so let's start things off we do not have a rel feature obviously we don't need one in this case 8.25 ohm is what we want to see Let's see how accurate we are in low ohms mode if i can just get this meter to stay up here we go number 8.25 ohm oh so look at that 8.2 ohm 
Let's see how quick this is in terms of settling time. Sitting at 200K right now, spot on 200K. Let's bring it up to 300K. Hey, no worries there. 700K. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's try one mega ohm. Fairly quick to range. Three mega ohm. Seven mega ohm. I'm sorry, six mega ohm. And finally, should be looking at 10 mega ohm. Yeah, nice and clean. So perhaps not the fastest of the bunch, but definitely accurate and uh, no problems here. Next up is LED mode. Hey, I never met an LED. I didn't want to turn on. Yeah, get it? Turn on? Bad joke, I know. Okay, starting off with the green LED. By the way, I gotta say once again, I like these leads. They just feel really good. By the way, they are hard. It's not a soft body. No, it's hard, hard plastic, but just has a really neat feeling to it. Anyway, here we go. Green LED. Oh, nothing. Nada. Wow, that's a little disappointing. Let's go over to the yellow. Okay, two for two in terms of no man's land. Let's try the red LED. Nothing. Wow. Blue LED. Finally, the white. And we all know that's not going to work. So, oh, oh, big disappointment here. Um, zero for five in terms of illumination or a forward voltage drop. Actually, absolutely, um, oh, bah, was not expecting that. Very, very poor in the LED department. Okay, well, let's try a standard diode, shall we? See if we get a forward voltage drop out of this. And yeah, no worries there, that works just fine. But if you want to light up LEDs, definitely not with this meter. Why, hello there, little man. Mama. By the way, the bezel here is very, very glossy. Glossy, glossy, glossy. It's not a bad thing. I'm just saying it is definitely going to pick up fingerprints and probably scratches over the long term just because it is so darn glossy. Already, Aphrodite, it is continuity time. That's it. Oh, my favorite time. You know it. Yeah, do we have a pocket rocket or do we have something that we don't even want to talk about? Let's hope the continuity knocks our socks off. And yes, I am wearing socks. Okay, three, two, one, here we go. Hey, not so bad, not so bad at all. Now with these gold tip leads, super fast. It is latched, fairly loud. I'd say that's about an 8 out of 10. It doesn't latch 100% of the time. I'd say about 85% of the time. But definitely, definitely for the onboard test leads, it is extremely functional. eighty four point zero dBA maximum out that is loud finally we're in AC volts not an issue here 120 volts AC looking good now remember this does not do duty cycle or uh, frequency strictly the voltage that's it already in terms of testing that is as far as it goes so far not so bad one little hiccup there in the led department other than that this 4000 count auto power off multimeter has been pretty decent okay let's take it apart and see what is on the inside already to get inside we have two phillips screws one there one there and now they're over there that's it that's all so this should just pop up yeah look at that just like butter like butter comes right out of the assembly super super handy wow i like that okay so we have our basic clamshell once again with that nice reeling mechanism for the leads um not much else going on there let's take a look at that pcb so there we have easy access to those 
two LR44 batteries. That's what it's going to take to power these up. And by the way, rest assured, Sanwa does ship this unit with the batteries. Interesting as well, we have one PTC on this side of the PCB as well. Okay, so let's see if we can get in on the other side. Oh, by the way, I just noticed that as well. Very nice. We have brass threaded inserts. So when you do have to change those batteries, um, the wear and tear will not affect the integrity of the casing itself. Good stuff, Samwa. To get in a little bit deeper, we have a couple of clasps on the bottom and the top of the PCB, and you just pull them apart and it just ever so gently comes out. Now this is where you can tell Sanwa quality is really, really coming through. Uh, let's start off with that rotary selector switch itself. Wow, look at those rotary selector pads. I mean, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Definitely gold plated and wow, that is there for the long term. So kudos to Sanwa, really, really nice, nice quality. Keeping up with the rotary selector, look at the rotary selector tracks themselves. Once again, gold plated and just super super clean wow i can't get over how clean this board is and moving down the board look at that we actually have a vr1 we have a trim pot probably for the voltage um i was not expecting to see that on this sanwa and look at that rotary selector tracks gorgeous once again plated in gold beautiful absolutely beautiful once again this is where you know when you're paying a little more you can see what you're paying for high-end quality. I mean, this is a gorgeous PCB. And speaking of PCB, that is a thick PCB as well. It is not a thin, rather thick. So we have multiple layers of PCB. Better in terms of overall quality, keeps the board um, cooler, keeps things um, more on track as uh, wear and tear goes on over time. Thicker the PCB, usually the better the quality. Moving up the board here, we have the main IC, the main integrated circuit. This is the FS9711 that is designed by Fortune. Also here we have the fab date, once again, 3219. I believe that is March 2nd, 2019. Here we have the LCD output for the um, display. And if you can see the elastomer right at the bottom there, really nicely done. I mean, you have to understand this is a pretty tight assembly here, a small package. So they're squeezing a lot into a really tight space. But once again, uh, did a really, really nice job. This is super clean and I just like the quality. Once again, this is a higher than normal um, type of um, display for this size of meter. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And at the top here we have you guessed it, that's our speaker piezo. And look at the soldering, you know, little things like this, really, really good attention to detail. Plastic itself is ABS, and all in all, I like what I see. Okay, I'm gonna put it back together and come back with, yeah, you guessed it, closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Sanwa PM7A. Wow, look at that quality. I'm telling you, this is a well, well-made meter. Yes, it's definitely not the most inexpensive pocket meter you can buy, that's for sure, but you do get what you pay for. In this sense, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Incredibly well made. I really love those test leads. Once again, I just can't say it enough. They really have a great, great feel to them. The selector switch as well, super easy to use. And I just love the fact that you can't turn it off unless the clamshell is properly closed. No, this is a mini meter with a big, big personality. All things considered, you can definitely pay a lot less, but you're not gonna get anywhere near the quality. The Sanwa PM7A Pocket Mini Digital Multimeter gets a solid three out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review. Everybody, Sanwa Week continues. Lots of more great Sanwa multimeters coming your way. And don't forget, at the end of it all, we're gonna give away one of these Sanwas to one lucky subscriber. Hey, all you have to do to get entered is just leave a comment, anything, and you're automatically entered. Thanks for watching. Till the next one, keep on testing.